Good evening, everybody, and uh, a, a warm welcome to absolutely everybody that's joined us this evening. It's um, our last session for the year, and uh, I would like to uh, welcome Dr. Si Guo and forgive my pronunciation again, but um, a, a very interesting topic, and then nonetheless this evening, as you can see on your screens, it's uh, using classroom technology with a difference. A lot of technology we've been talking about over the last couple of years. Uh, there are terms that we, we weren't probably some of us weren't too familiar with. Um, we've got to learn all sorts of new new um, terminology, new techniques, new software, new websites, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we'll be delving a little bit more into this this evening. Uh, just a reminder, microphone's off, uh, video's on. If you like, there's going to be a Padlet. Uh, Dr. Gore will be speaking about uh, how to go about doing this. And uh, the video will be available after this evening. It will be on our YouTube channel. And then we will also be providing you with the slides and a resource pack at the end, but you will be receiving emails about all of this after. Okay, so I will leave this up to Dr. Guo to start this evening. Welcome. Thank you so much, Alex, and thank you for having me here today. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, uh, today, the topic is about using classroom technology with a difference, but don't worry, uh, because um, we're going to not only just talk about technology, but we're go going, also going to focus on the how do we use technologies, the teaching methodology we can use in our not, not only just the technology in mediated uh, learning environment, but also that can be used in face to face classroom as well. Yeah, so uh, let's get started. Oh, I'll just. Uh, Click on this one. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think uh, as everybody knows, um, or most the learning language learning and teaching materials, they basically they designed for like formal education purpose or settings such as face to face or sometimes like blind uh, blended learning material uh, environments. Uh, as our language education has been, you know, redefined during the pandemic, and also we have plenty of choices like digital tools or technologies we can have how to innovatively use combine use different like digital tools and to reach or intended like learning or teaching outcomes that have been uh, become like imperative for language learners or language educators as well so uh, today we're going to uh, the topic is about what technologies we can use in our language classrooms and also how do we combine them, innovatively combine them to achieve with our like a language teaching methodologies to achieve our learning goals. So before we start, just, just a little bit in background or introduction about me. I'm a lecturer in uh, Chinese studies at Macquarie. And uh, before I came to uh, Australia, that was uh, like 12 years ago. I did like, I, I had, I have been taught uh, teaching like Chinese in China for three years. Uh, I work at a principal, uh, Princeton, Princeton University summer program in Beijing. And uh, um, in that program, we were taught to use audio lingo teaching methodology. Some of you may, uh, be, may be familiar with that. Some of, of you not. That's fine. And also uh, I've been teaching at uh, BLCU and Tsinghua University as well. So after I moved to Australia, I started to uh, work at um, uh, Macquarie University. But before that, uh, for a very short while, I uh, worked as uh, like uh, uh, casual staff at uh, uh, like primary school, after school care, like Chinese program, as well as um, a uh, community, a uh, Chinese community language school as well for a very short time. So just a little bit of uh, background about me. So uh, I know a little bit about community language teachers or their teaching settings, uh, te uh, settings, uh, the materials for a little bit like 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. And this are my, my research interests focus on task based language teaching. We're going to talk a little bit uh, later, and also technology mediated language teaching and the second language acquisition. So this is all like uh, about they are all like the topic we're going to mention later today. So uh, basically, we're going to cover these four topics today. First of all, um, technologies, what technologies we can choose from and uh, in our community language teaching settings. And then we're going to talk a little bit about task based language teaching 
And uh, why I think it can be, uh, it has been proved or it has been, uh, for my perspective, personal perspective, I found it's very useful and effective in my teaching experience. And uh, why is that like the fundamental theories behind this teaching methodology? And then we're going to share some like very hands-on, very practical teaching, like um, uh, design framework, as well as like the, uh, we're going to talk a little, a little bit about the task, what, what task we can design in our class, uh, in our teaching practice, and uh, how many like task type we can choose from and which can be used very effective for our foreign language teaching classroom. And if we still have time, we're going to mention a little bit about uh, mobile assisted language learning because it's a very it's a trending uh, research and uh, 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 research uh, uh, area in our um, technology medic language teaching area. Okay, so uh, before uh, we before I talk. <laughs> further, I would like to know like what technologies or what digital tools you can use like uh, or do you prefer or have you ever used or do you like uh, in your teaching practice? So there's a palette links. I'm going to share it in the chat. So uh, if you can, oh, just let me stop the sharing. Yeah, I'm going to share it in the uh, chat box. So if you can, I hope you can answer this very quick question. I'm going to share um, my uh, screen with you. Um, am I sharing my screen? Uh, oh, sorry, I'll stop sharing. I'll just share my my browser with you. So uh, at the meantime, feel free to add any of your answers here. Uh, probably you can see. Um, maybe first, yeah. Oh, okay, I can see some answers in the chat. So if you don't mind, um, can you click on the padlet link in the chat box? And uh, you can answer that, like what tools or technologies you have ever used or you, you want to use, you would like to try, and uh, for what purpose? Like I, this is the answer I put, <laughs> this is my answer. Uh, I use Zoom with my uh, students, especially during the pandemic. And for what purpose is to prove their uh, listening and speaking, especially for these skills. And basically we use that for our online classes during the pandemic, you know, the, the lockdown period. And um, yeah, feel free to add any tools or oh, anything you find very useful. What wall? Oh, iPad, <laughs> sure. So for the mobile devices, are there any like um, special applications or um, yeah, whiteboard? Sure, sure. Uh, you found for uh, for what purpose? Like what teaching purpose for to improve students' fluency or their language accuracy or um, book creator uh, iPad? Yeah, okay. Oh, you can also mention if there are not many like technology or digital choices in your like classroom or in your school, in your institution, you can also mention that. Google Classroom, okay, sure. World War, internet, yeah. Kahoot, yeah, grammar, okay, grammar, vocab. Yeah, PowerPoint, sure. <laughs> That's what we're using today, sure. Projector, yes. Sure. Google Classroom. Okay, Google Jamboard. Uh, just let me have a look at it in the chat. I think we have more answers in the chat. Yeah, uh, iPad, whiteboard, great. Google Classroom, po uh, yeah, uh, uh, I think PowerPoint, presentation, podcast, yeah, uh, charts, good, class dojo, 
Quizzy, Grammar, Zoom, Handout, and Google Classroom, Quizlet, wonderful. Yeah, Zoom. What board, what wall, online games, a lot. That's really good. Okay, wonderful. So you can keep going and uh, I'm going to just uh, keep sharing my screen. Um, are you able to see my slides now? Just want to- We can see the Padlet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just uh, stop sharing. Sorry, I'll just uh, um, desktop, a desktop. Yeah. Are you able to see my slides now? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Okay, I'll just stop the, uh, um, I'll just keep showing the slides. Yeah, so uh, uh, I can see quite a few of you already answered that question. That's really good. And uh, if we want to categorize all the different uh, answers, like different digital toys or, or, or the, the technologies we can have. And then, so we, we can we can categorize them in uh, different categories. For example, uh, we can think about the interaction mode we had throughout the, uh, the technology mediated interaction versus or face-to-face -face interaction. What's the difference? So. Uh, we can think about the mode we employed. For example, if you're using emails or if you're using PowerPoint slides or using Zoom, uh, Google Classroom, obviously we have different modes and we have different uh, language forms. For example, if you are using like the spoken form or uh, some of you use the written form and also the means we have, like uh, you use the textual means or you use the audio or visual or verbal or whatever. And also we can think about the interconnectivity. So, uh, so you can think about it is one-on-one -on -one or uh, is one too many or many too many, like what we have now. So uh, in uh, broader terms, we can basically categorize all the tools in two groups. So one is synchronous. Yeah, so obviously like what we're having now, so we can, uh, real, we can communicate with each other like real time, yeah. So the, without any delays. So uh, such as other synchronous tools, such as like chatting or uh, Zoom, like uh, video conferencing, like uh, or MOOCs, we have, uh, and so forth. And obviously, we also have delayed, which is asynchronous tools. For example, um, if we have like a discussion forum, or if we have a, a blog. Or we have, we can have like emails, we can have uh, other tools, like if we provide like delayed or uh, delayed feedback to our students or, or what. So, um, so there are some research shows like asynchronous, uh, maybe we'll just talk about synchronous. So because uh, the synchronous uh, technology mandated communication is more like um, uh, similar to what we have the face-to-face -face interaction. A lot of research have shown that the synchronous uh, communication or medi technology mediated communication, they have a number of potentials in facilitating learner-to-learner -learner interaction and increasing equality of uh, participation. Maybe some of you, of you agree, some of you don't, that's fine. And enhancing learner's language output and also contributing to uh, negotiation of meaning. So this concept, negotiation of meaning, I'm going to leave it to the next part because it's a very important concept in, uh, in second language acquisition. On the contrary, so like asynchronous, which we pr can provide like delayed, like feedback or communication, uh, recent res uh, literature shows that like for in, in the asynchronous, um, technologies, and then we, the students, they can pr produce more syn uh, syntax, uh, uh, a greater lexical richness and a more complex language outcome. So this is, there are pros and cons of the both of the, uh, the either the synchronous and the asynchronous tools. So maybe we can pause and uh, reflect. So on your answers uh, on the tablet, so uh, which, tools you have used, they can provide asynchronous like communication or feedback to our students. 
and which tools you have ever used or uh, you just put in the Padlet or the, in the chat box that can provide like synchronous, which is more resembled to our face-to-face communication. If you want, you can also add, go back and uh, edit your answers like, um, like Zoom, obviously we can, uh, we, we think this is a, a synchronous tool, which can provide some like um, real-time communication with our students, and uh, can you also mention about what the advantage or disadvantage of the tools or of the technologies you just mentioned in the answer? And why is that? Just the, trying to uh, see the answers in the chat box. Oh, Telegram and WhatsApp, yes, sure. We're going to mention a little bit about social media later. Oh, uh, do you prefer, maybe you can also think about, do you prefer to use asynchronous tools or synchronous tools to communicate with your students? And why is that? Are there anyone want to answer that question? You can just uh, turn on your microphone if you want. <laughs> oh, hi, Cynthia. Uh, yeah. Sorry, are we answering into, into the chat or on the Padlet? Uh, either one is fine. I, I noticed quite a few of you already answered that in the Padlet. If you can, you can always go back and then add it to your answers. Padlet not letting us. Oh, really? Okay. Sorry. Um, do I need to reshare share the, uh, the link again? Or let me just uh, I'm not sure. Again. It's about, because I can see some people are editing. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, for me, Padlet is okay. Yep. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's okay for me also. Then it's working. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Oh, anyone want to just uh, verbally uh, answer that question? That's feel free to just uh, shout out or just turn on your microphone. So actually we were using the Google Classroom. We started with Zoom first, but uh, then uh, uh, because we have uh, nearly 1000 students. So we then started with the Google Classroom, which was uh, kids were already aware of that, that particular program, how that program was because they were using it uh, at school also. And uh, the, another thing is that we were looking for something, uh, we were very, very actually, um, you can say paranoid with the security of the children that uh, mm -hmm. when they log in, then how the teachers and the kids will feel secure. So we found that Google Classroom security is much more higher than the Zoom at that time. Mm -hmm. Zoom has improved a lot since the, that uh, COVID, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we used that, and we still have two online sessions mm. and two face-to-face -face sessions. So for the, for the online session, continuously we are using the Google Classroom. Sure, great. Thank you for sharing it. Anyone? Is that very common to use Google Classroom in a community language school? Hi, how are you? This is Nasreen. Um, I'm, I'm vice principal, but sometimes I'm teaching. I use a PowerPoint and um, video game, video and face-to-face um, uh, -face everything because it's, um, I think it's face-to-face -face better than another option. Mm -hmm. And um, you can have good relationship and communicate and learn to children because they have problem to writing and how join the word, um, part by part together is very hard for them because our language um, is um, Persian and writing is from right to left side and is different with uh, Latin. And um, this in this language, we have to show them how you can write because it's very hard to write in. Anyway, uh, I use PowerPoint, picture, telegram, and voice, and <laughs> um, practice different Zoom, different things. 
Yeah, great. Thank you for sharing it. I totally yeah. agree with you. Yeah, technology, they cannot replace face-to-face -face interaction for sure, especially between our language teachers and or learners, students, for sure. Totally agree. Anyone want to share it? Hi, I'm Mirukula Supaya, and I we use face-to-face uh, -face classes now. And I'm teaching uh, VC children, so um, I um, we don't do much of games. I normally use PowerPoint, uh, so all my notes in PowerPoint, and I explain via PowerPoint. Mm. Yeah. Great. Any others? Okay. Yeah, I can see quite a few of you already added to your answers here. Yes, as these uh, two previous two uh, speakers just mentioned, um, I'm not going to say, oh, technology, they can be, you know, it's the, the perfect tool for everything. So that's why I'm going to move to next topics, which uh, next topic, and which is about task-based te uh, task based language teaching uh, methodology. And why is that? Because Usually, it's one of the tech, uh, teaching methodologies or approach I use it either in my like online uh, classes, also in the uh, face-to-face -face teaching practice. I found it very useful, and um, some of you already maybe already know it. Some of you are uh, not familiar with this, and uh, I'm not saying this is the only teaching methodology you should adopt in your class. However, I found it's very good uh, solution or supplementary. Um, activities or resources for me to help my students to practice um, instead of using drill, drilling, or uh, just uh, practicing uh, answer questions all the time. I found it's very interactive and uh, very useful in my teaching practice. So let's have a look. So uh, let's first talk about what is task. Yeah, in Nunes' definition, he defined task as a piece of classroom. Class, uh, classroom work, and that's involved learners in comprehending, manipulating, producing, or interacting in the target language. And then they also, uh, he also emphasized on the student's attention is principally focused on meaning rather than language form. So different from like the audio lingo uh, or other like translation teaching methodologies. First of all, the key word, one is a piece of classroom work that will involves students' interaction. And the second one is focused on meaning rather than the language form, like rather than just explain the structure or explain the grammar terms, etc. And in 2009, Alice defined uh, the, the task in uh, a few like key points as well. So still the first one, the focus should be focused on meaning rather than language forms, like we just mentioned. And then there will be the second one, there should be some gap. So the, we're going to explain the gap later. So there's a need for both, uh, or could be like uh, among the speakers, to there's a need to convey information, to express their opinions or their share their thought, etc. And then the third one is uh, learners should largely have to rely on their own resources, no matter like linguistic or unlinguistic, to in order to complete the task complete the activity. So that means this teaching methodology is not like a one way, like a one uh, lecture or teacher centered methodology. It's more like student centered. St students need to rely on their own resources, like language resources to solve a problem or complete the task. And the last one is there is a clearly defined, oh, sorry, just one second, uh, outcome other than the other use of language. So the students need to achieve, so there is an achievable outcome or achievable goal of the task. So that's the keywords of uh, Alice's definition. Um, so TPLT, so task-based language teaching, so they have been uh, proved as a good solution for um, the emergence of technology mediated, uh, mediated communication and also for the, uh, uh the the uh, sorry the 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 challenges things is can offer students offer students to use the target language in an authentic context for a meaningful communication in no matter face to face or online or blended learning environments so this uh, tblt that can better support 
students input and output process. We're going to talk about input, output, uh, negotiation of meaning these terms uh, later with a uh, 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 yeah, with a picture. And also this um, approach is considered to be conducive to stimulating and enabling learners interaction, fostering, uh, fostering their process of negotiation, negotiation of meaning, and also enhancing their collaborative learning and task engagement. So the students, they need to complete something, they can, they have to collaborate with other people. And the to complete a task, they can they are not able to complete by themselves. So this basically this is how do we do in the TBLT task based language teaching. So the fundamental uh, theories behind uh, the TBLT is in one one of them is the interactionist theories of second language acquisition. So I think this uh, this figure can well explain the process of uh, negotiation of meaning and uh, how negotiation of meaning can trigger learners' second language acquisition. So imagine in a conversation, in a conversation flow, and this bubble indicate a communication breakdown. So if students, they are engaging in a meaningful communication, for example, I say, hello, how are you today? And then if there's a breakdown take place, and then they will further triggers the negotiation of, of meaning this process to solve impasses of communication. For example, a very common uh, mistake in my uh, first year students will be, they always say, I good in, in Chinese, I mean, in Mandarin, because it's very common to say, I, I, I'm, I am good in English. However, in Chinese we say, hao, And a lot of students just say, hao. Yeah, just remove the uh, the hand, this particle. So if there's a um, uh, like meaning a uh, communication breakdown, and then the students will need to use different strategies to overcome this uh, this uh, language uh, breakdown. So throughout this process, they need to provide some different like uh, negative feedback, or including recast. Recast is more like to reframe the the, the language in the target language and then to, to say it again. And the feedback could be like, I beg your pardon, uh, can you say it again? Or oh, uh, recast is more like, oh, did you mean, oh, do you mean you are good? Or oh, something. Throughout this process, the interlocutors, or I would say the language learners that will receive native feedback and then to, in, to, to produce some modified language out, output. Throughout this, this process, the students' attention have been drawn from the meaning to notice the gap be between their language output and the input. And then this process will trigger their second language acquisition and uh, draw their attention to focus on language forms. Yeah, so the interaction hypothesis suggests uh, there are three ways the interaction can contribute to second language ac acquisition. First of all, is interactional modification, just like, uh, did you mean, or do you mean uh, something that can make the input more comprehensible for them, or for the learners, or for the listeners. Second of all, learner second language acquisition is facilitated by receiving feedback on their language production. So that's why I think um, uh, I always encourage my students to do some language exchange to the target language uh, countries and or they can find a language body or they can talk to a native speaker. They can, throughout the, the communication, they can receive uh, negative feedback to, um, to draw their attention. And also the last acquisition, uh, and lastly, acquisition is promoted when students are pushed to reformulate their language output. So, uh, throughout this process, they will draw uh, their attention will be drawn to the uh, to notice the gap. So as we uh, as we already mentioned, the task is useful, and what task we can choose. 
So uh, in 1993, Pika et al, they, uh, they categorized like five different types of tasks that can be used to for uh, language learners, including jigsaw tasks, information gap tasks, problem solving, decision, and opinion exchange. And later I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about the first uh, jigsaw information and uh, decision making, this three. And um, the in their study, uh, they believe the task in which if the information is split in two ways, just like jigsaw task, for example, and also the task that subsequently require interactant to exchange language, like there's a language provider, a uh, requester, and a supplier. They believe that this type of Task, for example, jigsaw tasks or information gap tasks, they can show higher potential in stimulating interaction and communication other than other task types. And also they believe if the each interactant hold a uh, different portions of information like requester, supplier, and they will which they must be, uh, they, they must exchange their information in order to reach the task outcome, for example, the uh, jigsaw task or information task, that will uh, be more, um, that will create optimal learning conditions. And also they believe if the learners, if the both the interactions that um, they can have some like um, com convergent goals, yeah, they can have uh, higher potential to uh, facilitate their second language comprehension as well. So later, I'm going to just uh, quickly show you how to design tasks and um, what the task um, should be look like. So I just use um, one of the task design framework that created by Ali and the Nunan. Um, as I mentioned, this is not the, the, uh, the primary, like the teaching methodology I use. Normally, like uh, in our language class, we have like each week we have two hours lecture, two hours tutorial. Normally I'll just use one hour uh, tutorial time for a task or for our activity if you want, want to uh, co-ed. And basically I would divide this one hour into three stages. The first one is more like a pre-task stage. Uh, I'll just use the, um, a web conferencing tool as an example. You can either use Zoom or other conferencing tool, or I also replicate this approach in my face-to-face -face teaching practice. That's fine as well. That's worked pretty well. So basically we spend the first like say 20 minutes or 10 minutes, it's really up to you in the main room or in the tutorial class. And then we're going to do some warm up activities to recall the students, um, to recall the, uh, the language patterns of vocab expressions we learned before in the lecture. And, uh, and then we move to the task uh, section. The student, after we explain the uh, the instructions of the task to the students, and then we allocate the students in breakout rooms, and then they're going to do some pair work. And later, I'm going to show some of the tasks I designed. Uh, the last stage, which is the last 20 minutes, I'll just bring everybody back to the main room and I ask the student to present. And after their presentation, I'm going to give them some verbal or written feedback as well. So basically, this is the mode we use. As I mentioned, uh, basically, this is the one of the, uh, the two, uh, web conferencing tool I used before. Uh, it's called Blackboard Collaborate, which is quite similar to Zoom, I would say. But the students, is more interactive. The students, this is one of the warm-up activities I designed with my students. The students, they can all drag and drop the the characters, the, the script to match up with different pictures. And then to, uh, to and then I ask them to uh, say a full sentence with the keywords. And yeah, so as I mentioned, we're going to talk about like three uh, basic, uh, basic tasks. The first one is jigsaw task, which is quite too similar to puzzle or jigsaw, you know, the games. So the jigsaw task involves learners in combining different pieces of information to form a whole. 
It could be like two students or three or, or many students in one group. And then they need to put the pieces of the information together and make a story. I'm going to share one of the jigsaw tasks I designed for my students. Are you able to see my screen now, the, the third online session? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, so this is a, for one hour online tutorial we had with our students. So first of all, there are some warm up activities. I asked the students to say like north, west, different directions in the target language. And I also had a floor plan written in Chinese and I asked them to describe like the living room is facing north and the dining room is next to kitchen, etc. So ask the students to answer a few questions. And how do we ask uh, or giving directions in Chinese, some like the expressions we introduce in the lectures. And then the main room, I set up a scenario for the, the, the students. There are two students in one breakout room, but you can have more. So uh, this is the uh, the scenario is on the orientation day, two students are exploring, uh, exploring the campus. And then they had one, um, they had uh, the same map with different building marks. And then they need to ask each other some questions to complete the map and uh, mark everything on the map. So if they still have time, there's some supplementary tasks for them. They're going to complete a few tasks. They need to go to the, show direction to a students to go to apply for a library card to the student center and go to buy some books in the bookstore, etc. And this is the patterns they have to use in their practice, because when you're designing tasks, you also need to think about, you need to give very clearly, very clear instructions for the students, because if you send them to breakout room, and if you, um, you cannot take a look look after everyone at the same time. So uh, the students need to know what they are expected to do. The, the same as or face to face like group, group work again. So this is the compass map they had, and uh, I also want to share because it's a jigsaw task. We have different students hold different part of uh, part of the pictures or uh, part of the map. Are you able to see my map now? I think I'm sharing yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So this is the the student A will have this map map, and then they need to ask questions to the partner to figure out the uh, the the you know the the buildings labeled with star what the building is, and then the same for the student B as well. Oh, I couldn't find my folder. Sorry about that. Yeah. So the student B will have the similar one, but with different uh buildings labeled. So this is a jigsaw task. And then the students need to complete it, the, the following uh, activities for that virtual student. Okay, yeah, so this is one of the uh, the jigsaw tasks we have. Oh, I think we need two. And this is another one. I'll just quickly go through it. So the students have, this is the photos for student A, and this is the photos for student B. They have the first picture labeled. The students need to use the grammar patterns to describe the, uh, the pictures to their partners. And then the students B need to listen and find out the following one. The student A will have the older pictures in older, old numbers, like number one, three, five, seven. And student B will have the even numbered um, uh, pictures, like number two, number four, number six, and number eight. And then the students need to take turns to do following the, uh, the, the instructions and then to put everything in the picture. That's what we have in our online session. The student needs to drag and drop and put the pictures in the correct order and retell the whole story. So this is the jigsaw task. Okay, let's move on to the next two. This is more straightforward. So information gap task. So the task in which one student or group have one set of information and another student or the other, another group has a the other side of the information. They have to negotiate and find out the other party's information. Uh, I'm going to share quickly, share one of the information gap tasks I we had before. So this is also, we have some warm up. This is ask a student to apply for a Chinese visa. 
some warm up activities of how do we use bar sentence to say uh, the following sentences. And then still a role play. One is one a McCray student who needs to apply for a student visa. The other, the partner would be a Chinese embassy, the, the, the staff who work at uh who works at uh Chinese embassy. And this is a real authentic uh application form. This application form I download online. I, I cut a little bit to make it easier for my students to complete in uh, 20 minutes. So the students need to uh, follow the uh, the the in information they had. Each student will have one set of the information, and that they need to ask each other questions. For example, how do we fill out the form, and then the the, the staff will just convert it into uh, a question in uh, in more more verbal form, like what is your name, uh, when is your birthday, etc. Because it's only for the first year students, I make it very simple for them. Mm -hmm. And when the students they finish, they need to present. So uh, this is the picture. This is uh, the slides they when they are presenting. I'm going to China for study. I need to apply for the visa. Uh, do you have a passport? Did you bring your a photo, etc. So they can based on the information they hold, they can construct a whole conversation. So this is the uh, uh, information gap task. Let's move on to the yeah. So that's the task we just mentioned which is the third one I want to mention today is decision-making task. It's a little bit more complicated for beginners, I will say. So uh, in this task, students are given a problem. So this is uh, a problem or there's some decision they need to make. So uh, they need to choose from one of the potential or possible outcomes through negotiation or discussion. So one of the, the tasks we had in the decision making, sorry, just one second, is pretty simple. Is uh we still have this warm-up activities as the students say. So the scenario is as the students, one students as uh McCray students who want to buy some clothes, some pieces of clothes for their parents, and uh the other one is as a shop assistant. So this is the patterns they have to use, the, the words they have to use in their conversation. And it's, <laughs> forget about, uh, uh, about the other uh, pictures. Okay, so this is all their choices they can have, like the clothes, the, the pants or pajamas, et cetera, and the colors, the size, and the, the price. So they have to ask each other questions like, uh, like what size does your mom wear and what color does she like? Etc. So they have to make their decision based on all the information they have. Okay, so this basically there are the three um types of uh tasks I want to introduce. So uh, now I I hope I made it clear. Uh, I think uh, we can have uh, some breakout activities, <laughs> breakout room activities for you. Uh, so in these breakout rooms. You can either do some like brainstorm and to design either a jigsaw task or information ta uh, gap task with your partners because these two are pretty straightforward. I found in my uh, teaching practice and the research experience, you can all use English as the target language. Uh, you can quickly design one and uh, maybe we'll just think about for the uh, elementary or, or beginner. Uh, levels of English learners. They're so Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, thank you, Imok, um, uh, for sharing the, the, the interesting activity you design. And um, uh, I, not only in one room, but in a couple of rooms, uh, some um, teachers share one of their concerns for not allowed or uh, don't have many choices of technologies to use in their um in their classroom or teaching practice. So uh, I would like to ask. Uh, so first of all, I want to share some of my thoughts first, and then we can open this discussion to everyone. Uh, before I, I decided to uh, choose this topic, I I was told by my uh, colleagues and uh, also uh, 
as I mentioned, I have some experience of teaching at a, a community language, Chinese community language school. So I, I but that was over 10 years ago. So uh, I, I was aware of that. So when I was preparing for the seminar today, I will, I am not saying, I, I don't want to say, oh, technology is the best choice is they can replace all the face-to-face -face communication. They can, they are the best solution for everything. There's no like one size fits so. So uh, I think for uh, language teachers, you know your students the best, and then you know your uh, teaching like classroom settings the best, you know, uh, what the choices you have, but I want to, what do I want to share today is the teach, task based teaching methodology is not only can be used in an online like web conferencing environment, but also can, can be adopted in a face to face. And instead of uh, trying to say uh, we can use it um, for all the level of students, I think it's really based on the, the level of your students, their interests, and also I, I want to say this is a good uh, alternative way if you uh, if you feel sometimes your, yourself or your students that are bored with one way of communication or drill or some other uh, activities you, you did for a long time. So there can be some, there, can be a, a alternative or a solution for for that, but I want to open this uh, discussion to everyone. Do you have this similar situation, or do you have any suggestions? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, feel free to turn on your microphone. <laughs> Sorry, Cesar, do you mind if you can just quickly brief that what exactly you are? For sure. That does. So, sorry, what was the question again? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I was thinking uh, because uh, uh, quite a few uh, teachers mentioned that there are limited choices of technologies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, they are they're not allowed to use technologies or uh, devices in their teaching practice at like school or uh, institutions. So what's your solution? Do you have any suggestions for those teachers? Yeah. Sometimes I've yeah. actually- I'm um, happy to- Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you go, you go. Sorry. I'll, sometimes I've actually brought in my laptop. And that's been the attraction um, yeah. in a lesson. For example, we can we can actually do a game if it's a small group, um, if, because we're not allowed to use, say, the whiteboard or or projector or computer. So, um, yeah, bringing well, in so one laptop. Sorry. Sorry, do you mind me asking? Because um, I hope you don't mind me um, intervening, CJ. Um, See, so the, the situation in, in New South Wales is at least that the, the government gives um, uh, gives the opportunity to schools to use government schools. Some schools have their own premises or they're in yes. uh, a religious uh, building or a community building. Uh, so, so this varies a lot. Um, I have to say one thing. Uh, whereabouts is your school again? Which which one? Are you, which you're in a public um, school? Well, I'm yeah. I've been I've been at several schools, um, yeah. but I've been. I know that when I know from talking to Croatian teachers um, that they're in the same situation, they're not allowed to use mm. the, um, the, for example, Bonnie Rig, um, okay, let's not make and they're not allowed, they're not allowed to use the, yeah. the, the interactive. See, Joe, I, what I, Joe, I just want to add one last thing, uh, if I could, and then I'll leave it up to, to you. But um, don't forget that if you're in New South Wales, for those of you that are also members of the Federation, um, there are laptops. There are devices that you can that you can borrow. Um, people can borrow them. I just wanted to say that I'm not advertising. It's it's free, by the way. If you're a member of the federation, it's just. But uh, it's but it's that's that's available. So it is a, it is a real situation um, here in New South Wales in the schools. We've uh, we've got we've got the, the the principals who don't want to share um, for all sorts of reasons. Some are very valid. Some are not. Um, but just depends. So, but if it comes to laptops and equipment. There is there is an alternative, and if you can't use interactive whiteboard, uh, there are projectors that you can borrow. There's all sorts of technology that um, that is now just this is quite recent, um, and not everyone knows about it. I, I just want to take that opportunity if I could. That's all I wanted to say. Sorry for interrupting. Well, sorry, um, Alex. When, Alex you can... when, you, when you say laptops, how many laptops? Just That's up to you. Contact. Look, just contact me um, uh, mm -hmm. afterwards, and we can talk about it after. No problem. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. So. 
Thank you. Thanks, Alex. And I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, that when, uh, uh, when the sometime when we are not, uh, though we have our own school buildings, so we never face that thing, but we uh, sometimes we I need to take the kids away from the technology also so that they can uh, they can have some practice like then we use like a um, uh, we uh, like we also use the dice so we have a actually big area painted with a snake and leather so we just use the dice and the kids actually jump from one number to another and play that that or we have a group activities we do the tambola uh, game with the vegetables fruits and uh, these type of thing and we do the role play also so these are when we are not using the technology so we use these type of games with, to engage the kids and uh, they use the dialogues then they do, do the role play so we we just put the you know the some uh, we write on the piece of the paper and we fold it so, so they need to pick one mm -hmm. and then they need to uh, do the role play of that person or any any character sharing uh i noticed the uh, safa they put the uh, uh, always, always bring our resources yes that's true uh paula do you want to share some of your thoughts um hi yes um i i have technology but sometimes we have problems with the wi-fi or or maybe they are too tired because uh, I teach them after school hours, so maybe just to change a bit the dynamic of a regular class. Um, and for example, with dice, sometimes very quickly I create a dice with a paper, but instead of numbers, I put verbs or then, well, in Spanish, we have different words for different verb form for every person who's speaking. So we throw the dice and depending on the verb, they have to create a sentence or we use board games, but I adapt them to, to grammar or vocabulary. So it's, there are lots of ideas just to play with not using computers or screens or whatever, just adapting board games to, to the lesson of the day, you know? That's really good. Anyone want to share? <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Just Yes, uh, I just wanted to say sometimes, um, just back to your question about technology, um, depending on where the community language school is, if it's in a New South Wales public school, um, you still have to negotiate very carefully about the use of the school's Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Certainly whiteboards, are, um, electronic whiteboards are out, even though they're sitting in the classroom. But um, even the Wi-Fi, that we still need to get some uh, agreements with um, the Department of Education to make that really possible. Because in, in our group, it was just group seven, we were talking about sometimes you have to, um, you have some children at home that are not well. It, you know, this sort of transit, I mean, COVID didn't just end suddenly and we're all back face to face. We have this transition period where the teacher might be in the classroom teaching face-to-face, -face, but also providing um, Google Classroom online for students who might be at home because their family was in isolation. So the teacher is doing two things at once. So there, there, are, there have been some complications with the use of technology, but one of the things that our school has done, I think not, not completely across the school, but they have made a lot of use of it um, apps, the Chinese apps for vocabulary, word placement, um, you know, grammar and writing. And they've been able to use them a lot and bring them from the COVID experience into the classroom and use them within the classroom. So I think there has been a very, um, if you like, if, you, if you've been careful, a positive impact from what has happened as a result of COVID for our school. Mm. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yes, uh, uh, great. Well, living in a, a real world is not mm. ideal, but yes. Mm. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I think in the chat, some, um, uh, yeah, so some discussions uh, regarding to the laptops, you need to contact the CLSF office. Mm. Yeah.
Andrea, thank you for sharing that. Uh, also, I'm just sharing the slides we uh, I just used today, and just, just in case some of you uh, want to know more about it. Yeah, okay, so Alex just said uh, devices are free to borrow, which is good. Okay, and the, the email address, I think that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that, Alex, yeah. Okay, anyone want to share it any further thoughts? Yes, go ahead, Tim. Oh, I think you're muted. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, how about in Victoria? You know any information about borrowing laptop? Mm, I might have to say something there. Can I? Oops. Pardon? Pardon? Can I can I just mention something there? Look, that's that's not part of this discussion this evening. You'll have to get in touch with your local organisation. If you want to stay on afterwards, I might be able to give you some some information after the session. But can we just stick to um? Can we stick to the to the session tonight? I'm happy okay. to help you afterwards. No problem. No problem whatsoever. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, if there are no more, are there any more? Did I miss anything? Oh yeah. Sorry, Nasreen. Do you want to share something? <laughs> Uh, I think you're muted. Oh, sorry, Nasreen, I think you're muted. We couldn't hear you. Sorry. I, I use at home when I teach from Zoom. I use a different piece of um, um, different color. I can show them different color, helpful. Um, the mind is the focus the page and I wrote something on that and sentence, word, um, different word using is helpful for children. Different way and maybe the game, maybe the toy, different things. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, I think we don't have much time left. I just want to quickly cover my last topic. Um, I'm not quite sure how many of you uh, would like or have considered to use like mobile devices or uh, social media in your teaching practice, but I just want to a little bit to, uh, touch a little bit about this topic uh, because it's I'm just uh, running uh, one of, uh, it's one of my research projects at the moment. I think most of the research are doing is more like self-paced, uh, self-regulated learning, like the self-taught, like uh, teaching language learning applications on mobile devices. Uh, I just want to share some of my um, explanation uh, of my research project. I connect my uh, language learners with some Chinese native speakers, like Chinese students who are learning at English Language Center at Macquarie, who are preparing for their ELS test or who are learning some academic writing. So I asked them to do some exchange in uh, via WeChat, one of the social media Chinese uh, platform in China, and also some students uh, in uh, WhatsApp. I found it's very interesting to see their the students based interaction rather than so I was more like a mediator uh, in that group discussion so it's yeah so it's more like uh, I created some like um, topics to ask the students to exchange exchange their ideas like why Chinese people like to drink hot water and Australian student or people like to drink cold water or like oh, also I asked the students to introduce their hometowns in uh, in their talk in the target language in Chinese and English. I found it's very interesting, and uh, uh, I'm not quite sure whether you have used or would consider to use, but it still is one of options <laughs> in the future. You might want to do it with your uh, teaching or or just like language practice. Uh, process. Yeah, so that's basic. This is our students' discussion in the small groups. This is in a big group, and this is in the WhatsApp. 
Yeah, so uh, I think that's pretty much everything I want to cover today. Thanks everyone for spending the one and a half hour with me. I, I learned a lot. It's very interesting and inspiring session. Thank you so much.